Well, glad to know you're there. Good morning and welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Miamgul Agaji and thank God it's Friday. We do hope that you have plans to rest if you've been working throughout the weeks. Today on the show we'll be looking at uh, uh, some hot topics and uh, one of them is reps to hold security summit over plateau killings. Uh, what about them happening in plateau? is uh, a very mind-boggling thing and it's happening in all of the states and we do hope that this will bring some uh, uh, succor to the people of Nigeria. Endless reviews, amendments, cost National Assembly 1 billion naira annually. That's our second hot topic and of course we'll be looking at some newspapers to see what the headlines are today on our national dailies. Once again good morning and welcome to the program. We we'll move now to our top trending issues and we're beginning uh, with uh, the top trending issue for today and that is that um, federal government has directed speedy completion of nuclear energy curriculum. Uh, the National Universities Commission has been told to expedite action towards the completion of the nuclear energy curriculum. This is said uh, it said, will enable some Nigerian universities, the Nigerian Atomic Energy Commission, as well as polytechnics to commence the training of nuclear scientists and technologists locally. Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, stated this when he received in the audience the leadership of the Nigerian Nuclear Energy Commission who paid him a courtesy call in his office in Abuja. A spokesman for the Federal Minister of Education, Ben Gung, in a statement revealed that the Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, received the delegation on behalf of Education Minister. He pointed out that the Professor Maman also indicated that the federal government will prioritize the award of scholarships to students wishing to study nuclear science and related courses within and outside the country. The Director General of the Nigerian Atomic Energy Commission, NAEC, Professor Yusuf Aminu Ahmed, earlier told the minister that his commission was currently partnering with Korea and China to meet its training needs for the nuclear scientists, adding that there was a need for the country to look inwards in this regard. Professor Yusuf Aminu Ahmed emphasized that human capital development is critical for the country in the pursuit of a nuclear program to meet her energy and pharmaceutical needs. Okay, also Fort Mainland Bridge construction to begin in March, April, according to the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Somolu. He says the construction of the long awaited 37 kilometer Fort Mainland Bridge will begin uh, by the end of March or April. The governor stated this on Thursday in an address at the Lagos West Senatorial District Town Hall meeting held at the Balmoral Convention Center, Sheraton Hotel, the state capital. Somolu said, we've done extensively, I'm quoting now, we've done extensive work on the bridge, but we are at the crossroads of where to get real financing for that kind of project. We need to be very creative, but thank God that we have reached the last point of the construction. The governor explained that the bridge will be built in phases. Phase one will be from the junction at Ibrahim Adesonia all the way to waterfront that uh, is at Badori. He further said there was no way to build a new road without some discomfort, but that those with properties or businesses affected by the construction will be compensated, including tenants and landlords of the buildings to be affected. He said the next phase would be from the waterfront to Inado to Ibeshe in Ikorodu, and the third phase would be from Ibeshe to Itailewa Junction and later to Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Okay, that is very good. We hope that this will come to fruition. It's always been a campaign strategy of a campaign uh, phrase, the Fort Mainland Bridge, Fort Mainland Bridge. Every administration talks about it. We do hope it's not going to take up to 16 or more years like the um, railway took before uh, this first phase uh, came on board. We do hope that the Fort Mainland Bridge will come and it will not have too much discomfort for Lagosians who already are already facing so many difficulties moving from one point to the other to make sure that they put bread on their table every morning. 
Uh, in the meantime, the court reminds Fubara's loyalists over reverse assembly explosion is our next uh, top trending. A federal high court sitting in Abuja on Thursday reminded some loyalists of the River State Governor for their alleged involvement in the explosion that rocked and raised River State Assembly complex amid alleged moves by some lawmakers to impeach Governor Siminalaye Fubara on October 30, 2023. No fewer than five of them were arraigned on Thursday before Justice Bolaji Olajuwon of the federal high court in Abuja. They are Chime Eguma Ezebalike. Prince Lukman Oladele, Kenneth Goodluck Kwasa, Osiga Donald, and Ochuegia Thangard. In the seven charges, the defendants were accused of committing alleged terrorism offenses by invading, vandalizing, and burning down River State House of Assembly uh, during the week of the political crisis that rocked Port Harcourt in October last year. They were also accused of killing a superintendent of police, Bako Agbashim and five police informants in the Ahoda community of the state. The police informants alleged to have been killed are Charles Osu, Ogbo Naija, Idaok Uka Felix, Paul Victor Chibogu, and Saturday Edi. They were also accused of using various cult groups, namely Supreme Viking Confraternity, Confraternity Degbam, Iceland, and Greenland to unleash mayhem on the people of the state and their commercial activities. They all pleaded not guilty to the allegations. Although, although the immediate past factional speaker of the River State House of Assembly, Honorable Edgisner here, was not listed in the seven counts terrorism charges. He was, however, represented in the court by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Oluwole Aladedoin, on the grounds that his name featured prominently in the alleged offenses. He challenged the allegations that he was at large alongside other suspects. Justice Olajuwon did not, however, allow further arguments on the grounds that he was not yet a defendant in the charges. Shortly after the arraignment, the leader of the prosecuting team, Audu Garba, applied for a date for a trial of the defendants. However, the senior advocate of Nigeria, Lukman Fagbemi, who stood for first and second defendants, Chime Eguma Ezebalike and Prince Lukman Oladele, sought to move applications for their bail on the grounds that they have been in police custody since last year. Audu Garba vehemently opposed on the grounds that he had just been served with the bail applications and needed time to study them and file a counter affidavit. Justice Olajuwon agreed with the prosecution lawyer that the bail applications were not ripe for hearing and fixed February 2 for the hearing of all bail applications and reminded the five defendants be, to be taken to Kujie prison until their adjournment or the adjourned date. We do not know when the end to the drama in River State will stop, but we hope that uh, our democracy as a whole will not be affected adversely. We do hope that there will be um, a fast fix to whatever is happening there. Okay, we'll just take a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at the papers. In the meantime, let's see if we can get some report on the weather or any other thing that will keep us busy till when we begin to open the papers. Stay with us.